Good morning, everybody. The delivery guy just came and I'm super excited. I'm like a kid at Christmas. This is one of my many seed orders for the garden this spring, but I'm very excited about this one because this has a lot of my favorite products and varieties that I use and grow every year. So I wanna share my haul with you today. Now this is from Gurney's Seed and Nursery Company. And the first thing I've got in here is their vegetable food. So Gurney's has a full line of different foods and fertilizers for fruits and vegetables. And I think I've used all or almost all of them at this point. The vegetable food I like because it can be used on a wide array of items. I usually use it on like green beans and leafy greens and squash and things like that. But I like the whole line of Gurney's foods because they're a naturally based slow release fertilizer. Slow release foods will give the plants a long, slow, sustainable feeding, which ultimately will lead to hardier, tougher plants which is really what you want. The synthetic fertilizers will give you pretty amazing, very quick results, but that artificial growth surge is not what's best for the long term of the plant. So I really like to use the slow release fertilizers. The next product I have in here is one that I use, I've used every year for at least the last six or seven years. This is Green Step Caterpillar Control. And I do not like to use really any kinds of sprays, insecticides, fungicides, anything like that in my garden if I can help it. However, cabbage worms are my sworn mortal enemy and <laughs> at this point I'm in all out war with them. And this product is a product which is really effective against cabbage worms. I cannot grow a cruciferous crop without taking some kind of preventative action. I've tried using row covers, which actually work really well on a small scale. And if you get your timing just right, you have to get them covered before the adult cabbage moths are out and being active. But I just have had a really hard time staying on top of that. The green step is a naturally occurring bacteria, BT. I believe the pronunciation is Bacillus thunbergensis. I may be totally butchering that, but it's something like that. Basically from the way that I understand it, the caterpillars eat this while they're eating the plants and it essentially makes their guts ex explode, which is a, is a horrible, terrible death, but it's really, really effective. I feel a little better about using this product than I do some of the harsher chemical-based products for the garden. I really don't mind there being bugs on my produce in general. I always pick bugs off when I bring the stuff in to wash it. The problem is with like my cabbages and cauliflower and kale, and broccoli to a lesser extent, I cannot even grow a harvestable crop because the cabbage worms do so much damage to the plants. So I've found this really effective. This will be the first time I've tried this new ready to use format. So this is already mixed, ready to go. You just go out and spray it on your plants. In the past, I've used the concentrate, which you mix up in a sprayer and go out and spray. It's just that for the amount of plants that I need, need to spray, I really don't need much more than this. So I'm excited to try this new format. And then, I've got a bunch of seeds. So like I said, a lot of these are my favorite varieties and I've grown these for multiple years. The first one <laughs> is Sweetie Kohlrabi Mix. And I would love to hear from someone else. Am I the only person that gets this excited about kohlrabi? I don't know what it is. Like I've always liked it. We grew up, my dad always, always grew it in the garden. But the last couple years I've just gone crazy over it. I think I ate it three meals a day the entire spring while I had a kohlrabi harvest. But this variety I like really well. It's actually a very beautiful purple and green mix and it has an incredibly crisp, juicy texture and a really nice sweet flavor with just a hint of that nice mild cabbage flavor. And I'll just cut it up to use it with dip, shred it into salads. It's delicious roasted. It's just a wonderful versatile vegetable that I think is really underutilized. I've got Gurney's Blue Ribbon Broccoli. And I love broccoli. Roasted broccoli is delicious. I use it in all kinds of dishes, but Gurney's Blue Ribbon is the only broccoli that I've grown that I can actually eat and enjoy raw. It really has a sweet flavor and a really nice tender texture. And it puts on these big, beautiful heads really early in the season. 
And the nice thing that I've found is after that primary head is harvested, it continues to put on large side shoots as long as the weather cooperates. Double Delight Sweet Pepper. Now this is a mix of red and gold. I'm not actually sure if this is a bullhorn or more of an Italian fryer type, but it's got that long conical shaped fruit. And for whatever reason, I have found I have a lot better success with those types, the conical sweet peppers, than I do with the big sweet bells. I don't know why that is. I keep meaning to look into it, but I have not yet. But usually with the bell peppers, I have issues with worms getting into them, issues with sun scald, issues with them just rotting before they color all the way up. And it's really frustrating. With the double delight, I get big harvests of big fruit. It colors up, the fruit is perfect. There's no blemishes, there's no rotten spots. They're just really carefree and easy to grow and delicious. Now Lufagord, <laughs> This is one that I feel like has been on my wish list for like five years where I've said I wanted to grow it and then for whatever reason, I think usually because I run out of space, it never gets put in the garden. Lufa to me looks like it would be a lot of fun. I want to try growing it on, I did it at like a cow panel trellis. I'm going to put one over my two raised beds for a walkway this year and I want to try growing the Lufa gourd over that and I think that'll be a good fit because it's got big vigorous vines and then I think it will be really handy to then use the mature gourds as the actual like dish scrubber. Because we're buying scrubbers from the store anyway that closely resemble the loofah. And I think this makes a lot of sense. And I think the kids will find it really fun too. So this is gonna be the year. I'm gonna do it this year. Ah, the Gherking Pickler Cucumber. Now this is one of my newer favorites. I've been growing this for the last two years and I grow pickling cucumbers every single year. We make a lot of pickles, we eat a lot of cucumbers, but this so far has been one of my favorites. So I have a lot of issues with all the cucumber, everything, like everything they can get. The cucumber beetles, downy mildew, powdery mildew, bacterial will, like any problem that cucumbers can have, I get here in Ohio. And this one I've had really good luck with. It seems eventually it will succumb to something later in the season and I, I do eventually lose the vines, but this one seems to stay healthier later into the season. And the yields are just amazing. This thing puts on so many cucumbers and they stay this really nice, like three to four inch size, about an inch thick. They have that kind of warty gherkin type skin. They make excellent cucumbers. They keep their texture. They don't get soggy and soft like some cucumbers do. And they're really good for fresh eating too. They don't have that bitter skin like some cucumbers do. And we just, between pickling and snacking on these guys, just eating them all season long. This is Gurney's Primo Jalapeno Hot Pepper. And we grow jalapenos every single year. We usually just brine them and preserve them and for use all through the season. But a couple years ago, someone suggested to me smoking jalapenos. And if you have not smoked jalapenos, you must. It was life changing. <laughs> so my, my husband, loves smoking things. And the first year we tried this, we just took a great big batch, threw them on the smoker, cooked them down. They are delicious in all kinds of recipes. And then I actually just took those smoked jalapenos and froze some and then did some in the same kind of like salt water brine that I did my fresh jalapenos. And they just add a great depth of flavor to kind of any recipe that you want to put them in. So I strongly recommend trying smoked jalapenos. And Primo Jalapeno is a really great variety because it just, has phenomenal yields. Beautiful peppers, large size. No, I, I have not had any disease or pest problems on them. And like I said, I, one plant almost is enough for our family and we go through a lot of jalapenos. Mira Green Pea is another perennial favorite for our family. I think I've been growing this every year for gosh, like at least the last 10 years and it never gets old. I really like Mira Green because it is a pole type. So I grow it up a fence or a trellis. It has big healthy plants. It puts on a lot of pods and the pods are really long with a lot of berries per pod. It's got a great sweet taste and my kids love to just go out in the garden and pick the peas and just shell them and eat them right in the garden because they're really sweet and tender and delicious. I always mean every year to freeze more peas than I do, but it's hard to even get any after the kids have had their share. And what I really like about this one besides the flavor is it tends to continue to produce later in the season than even other pole varieties and it keeps that really nice eating quality longer. So that's it for now. 
Stay tuned because as I get these things into the garden and get things growing, I'm going to be giving updates on all of these products. You can actually see them out in the garden. And if you have any favorite products or must grow varieties, I would love to hear about those from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.